Have you ever heard the term flippening? Well, in summary, it is the hypothetical moment in time in which the market cap of Ether will overtake the market cap of Bitcoin. Well, today we're going to discuss what that means and why people should even care if that happens. Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real world value. So this hypothetical flip from Bitcoin being number one to falling to number two as Ether overtakes it has been in discussion since 2017 when it seemed like that was going to happen. And that was when the term the flipping was coined and has been used colloquially ever since as the Ether maxis are saying that's going to the moon and it's going to overtake Bitcoin. And of course, the Bitcoin maxis will answer back. And then there's that whole little conflict going on between the number one and number two coin. But I just want to clarify something. We're not talking about the specific token price. We're talking about the market cap. And market cap is a simple formula. It is calculated by the circulating coins multiplied by the current price. So at this point in time, Ether is only 7% of the price of Bitcoin. However, the market cap is 46% of the total market cap of Bitcoin. So although the token price is way less because there is a much larger supply, the total market cap is almost half. But the interesting thing with this whole market cap calculation is it actually doesn't even account for the number of coins that are lost or inaccessible. So, for example, Satoshi Nakamoto has a large stash of Bitcoin and they have not moved. And there is lots of rumors as to whether he is still alive, he or she or they, or if it is even accessible and will they ever be moved. And countless other people have millions of Bitcoins locked up on various wallets and hard drives and so forth, and they cannot access it anymore. So how much of that is actually circulating and available very hard to tell but the number that we use is basically the total supply but that is up for debate anyways because how much of the total supply is in circulation the interesting thing about why people even care or think that ether is going to surpass bitcoin is because it has some very unique properties that bitcoin cannot do and will never have in the future so for example ether is the token of the ethereum network and ethereum is of course the first blockchain that really had the ability to have smart contracts nfts DeFi, and it's really the one that really took the mainstream as far as hitting the headlines and everything. Of course, everyone speaks about Bitcoin. That was the first one, but the one that had the most users, the quickest adopters on the entry level, it was really Ether. So, or I should say the Ethereum network using the coin Ether, because Ether is the token that is the native coin of the Ethereum network. And of course, Bitcoin happens to be the token itself and also the network. So in case you're wondering why sometimes you'll hear about Ether versus Ethereum, if you're not familiar with that, it's because Ether is the token and then Ethereum is the actual network. So a lot of things are going on on Ethereum, such as the NFTs, the DeFi and all that stuff. But the token that you're going to be paying your gas fees with and what you're actually tracking that whole price of $1,500 or $4,000 or whatever price it might be is the Ether token. Now, Bitcoin is the store of value. What that means is this is something where is basically it's like digital gold. It's locking in the value of a token or a dollar as we know it. You know, we go to the real world off of this whole Web3 stuff. We're talking about dollars and it is storing it into it just like gold. So we call Bitcoin digital gold because it is a great store of value. When everything is going up and down, the economy is just, you know, just going to shambles and up in smokes. Bitcoin is more stable, relatively speaking, to all the other things that are happening in the market. And Bitcoin was originally designed as a transaction coin, meaning that it was supposed to be like digital cash. However, up until this point, we really haven't seen that. But with different protocols, such as the Lightning Network and things that are being implemented around the world, we're seeing that more and more happening. And of course, they're using the main Bitcoin as the settling. Now, that might sound like a lot of technical jargon for someone who might be hearing this for the very first time. But long story short is because Bitcoin is slow and expensive to transact in, it does not make sense to buy ice cream or your coffee using Bitcoin. However, with the Lightning Network, it's almost like the equivalent of Polygon to Ether. Well, with the Lightning Network, you can do 
all sorts of transactions very quickly and very cheaply and then settle it on the main network. So as we're seeing right now, most people are not buying anything with Bitcoin. They're storing it for the future and hoping to get rich in the long run. And that is how Bitcoin is being used as a store of value and not really as a currency or a cash, a way of transacting for the most part. Now, Ether is way more flexible. You can do all those things, like I said, with the smart contracts, NFTs, the DeFi. And because of that, it attracts a lot of people. The OGs tend to love their Bitcoin, be stuck in that area. However, new money really gravitates to Ether and Ethereum simply because, for one, it is a much lower entry point, getting in with, say, $2,000 as opposed to $20,000. And in many ways, it's like a savings account versus some sort of investment opportunity. Someone who is already wealthy, has their income, has their stockpile of cash, it makes more sense to go into stocks, bonds, and a little bit more secure things than, like, say playing penny stocks and in a way that is why bitcoin is sort of like the gold standard it's not going to give you the biggest returns but then you have people that are peddling with doge and shiba inu and all those things and then you climb up and you start to go to something like ether where it's much more stable however that is where new money and the moonshots are tending to go whether it is with nfts or these DeFi protocols a lot of people will just not use bitcoin as an entry point because there's not much action going there compared compared to what's going on on Ether or some of the other smaller network. But even when it comes to generating wealth, everyone knows that like, you know, storing your money in stocks and bonds and those things will never generate as much ROI or return on investment as starting a business. So many times people that are coming into all these things that are being built on Ether, it's because they're looking at it as, okay, this is basically like a new business investing in this startup company and growing with it, rather than putting something for the long term, the safe, the secure, parking it, and just looking for your steady six, seven, eight percent or whatever it might be, while well, they're looking at it in that way and trying to hit their moonshots on Ethereum. Now, it is high risk, high reward compared to the Bitcoin. But newbies, as I said, will tend to go towards that rather than the safe, secure, slow moving, generally speaking, asset of Bitcoin. So do I think that this flipping will actually happen? Now, this is a hot debate. A lot of people, especially in the NFT space, which where I spend most of my time, will absolutely tell you that, yes, this is what's going to happen. There is no way that Ether will not flip it because now it is secure and sound money after the merger. And there's so much use cases and everything for it. However, I tend to be a little bit more on the side of the Bitcoin maxis when I say that I don't really think that it's going to flip it. Now, I could be entirely wrong, but here's my reason as to why I'm saying that as someone who is gung-ho about NFTs. Bitcoins tends to have a lot of diamond hands investors. They're in this for the long run. The Michael Saylors and the Winklevoss twins and those people, they're not just exiting their Bitcoin positions. They're buying more even in the dips, even in these rough times. So there is a lot of people that are in this thing for the long run, as opposed to Ether, where people are flipping in and out. They're going to DeFi, they're going to NFTs, and there's a lot going on there. Not to mention there's all these layer twos, such as Polygon and uh, Arbitrum, Optimism, and all these other things to really detract the users from the main network of Ethereum onto these fast, low gas fee chains. And it is a completely different ball game. So that is why I think it is just really fractured and there'll never be that same consensus behind Ether that there will be behind Bitcoin. And I truly believe in a multi-chain future. So I think that that's only going to continue to fracture. Now, what does that mean, a multi-chain future? I don't think this whole, oh, everything has to be on Ethereum or it has to be on Solana, it has to be on Polygon or whatever, is going to be a thing in, let's say, five years. I think there's going to be so many blockchains, so many different things that are being built, and the front end user will have no clue what's going on as far as what's happening behind the scenes. And I think because of that, it's only going to make the emphasis and the dependence on ETH even less. Whereas with Bitcoin, people that are looking at it as the store of value and the money and all that stuff and the sound principles, the economic value of it, that's not going to change. It is slow moving. There is no consensus as to making these major changes. So for the most part, it's going to continue as is. And that is why I think that it's going to continue to grow. And those holders, those diamond hands people are only going to help to push the price up. ETH is way more versatile. It is always evolving. And there's so many more use cases. So it's sort of like gold and aluminum. There's a lot more that you can do with aluminum. There's a lot higher supply of aluminum than there is gold. You can put it into tin. You could put it into blankets. You, you name it. You can do so much with aluminum. There's only but so much that you could do with gold. But guess what? 
Historically speaking, gold has held its value, and that is sort of how I see it. This might sound like some sort of hyperbole, but yes, Bitcoin, digital gold, that's what I truly believe. And based on everything that I've seen, how it reacts to the economy going up and down and everything, well, it is the most stable, the most slow moving, the one that is the most trusted. And yes, just because it always has been number one doesn't necessarily mean it will be there. But truly, I believe that based on the economics and the principles of it, and it's unlikely that some major change is going to happen that is going to upset that. And when I entered Web3, I came in as basically an ETH maxi. I was looking at this and I was saying, you know what? There is no way that Ether is not going to surpass Bitcoin. But over time and watching how it reacts to these economic movements, how stable it is, how the community behind it, developers and just everything that is happening with Bitcoin versus what's happening with Ethereum, it really has made me kind of flip and say, you know what? I really don't believe this flipping is going to happen. As I came into this space, I was like, absolutely, within a year, Ether will be on top. But now I don't even see it happening ever. More people will enter via Ether and the Ethereum networks and everything that's happening with these smart contracts and these NFTs and so forth. However, I think eventually those people that come in will get their taste, their appetite, their eyes opened up to Bitcoin and then gravitate over there. That is what happened to me. And I know I don't speak for everyone and everyone doesn't think how I do. But once you see the evidence and especially if you ever read the Bitcoin standard, it just seems like that is the more sound play long term. And I have most Most of my money in Ether, most of my investment is on the Ethereum network. However, long term, when I'm going to take profits and cash out, I truly believe 10 years from now, my wealth will be more on Bitcoin than it will be in Ether. But speaking of a multi-chain future, the first blockchain that I was ever on was actually the Wax blockchain. And if you're not on Wax already, it is a really fun blockchain. And if you're interested in getting NFT on the Wax blockchain, I do that for the Nifty Business Show. And we have lots of collectibles and what have you. So you can get something for free at niftybusiness.show slash free wax. I'll put that in the show notes if you're interested in it. But as usual, I just want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.